Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Eat Art Space, a pop-up virtual gallery from my dining room in a little corner of Appalachia. It's spring here on, um, on this side of the planet, and I'm so excited to have you here. We have a little bit of beautiful natural light coming into the gallery that hopefully will supplement my chandelier. And in just a few minutes, Laura will be joining us. I'm hoping that um, she will show up in the feed soon enough. In the meantime, I wanted to make sure that, um, that you all could get a tour of the work. The exhibit this month is called Vibrating with Intention and it features self-portraits on oil, um, self-portraits of oil on canvas and then some Gickley prints that um, Laura has so graciously lent to us. Um, so in a minute, she'll be joining us on the live feed. In the meantime, if you have any questions for the artist, feel free to pop them in the comments, which I think are below. They're below for me. I hope they're below for you as well. Um, so this work is, has, spans a great number of years, and she will, uh, she'll explain that all of these are self-portraits of her, kind of about you know, the, the nature of the self and the artistic practice. But in the meantime, while we wait for her, I'm gonna give you guys a little spin around the gallery. Behind me, we have a couple of originals on, um, on canvas. And then over here we have, actually these, these are both originals too. I'm faking you out. So um, I know that there are several wonderful, um, wonderful Gickley prints that are here um, made by Joshua Niven in, um, in Asheville. So we've got local printing in addition to local art, and, um, and Laura has a local pizza from Harvest Table Restaurant. So thank you everybody for joining us. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna wave at all of you. Wave, wave, wave. I love this. So I, I don't know how many of you are local. Please tell me where you're from in the comments if you can. Um, I would love to hear where everybody is hailing from as I flip around the camera and show off some of these giggly prints. So this is called We All Deserve the Light. And this is I Am Supported. And these are both Gickley prints by Joshua Niven, who is at Asheville Fine Art Printing. And this is an original oil on canvas. So Laura is hailing from Jonesboro, which is right around the corner. Welcome, Laura. Another Laura from Bristol, but live in Illinois now. Thank you for joining us. All the way from Illinois. This is wonderful. So this is, ah, yeah, I know you, Patrick. Patrick from Bristol. This is an oil on panel, on wood panel, and this is a giggly print. And I mean, like, you can even see the scratches. Hey, Cosmo. It's great to have you guys tonight. I've been really excited about the weather we've been having because I got outside today. <laughs> anyway, here's a lovely self-portrait of Laura too. Oh, hello from Kingsport. A.H. Hales. So here are all of the original paintings which are live at eatart.space as well. And in a minute, there is Laura! Hey everybody, if you're at home, give Laura a big round of applause because she just entered the room. I'm going to allow her to join, if I can. Hang on, here it goes. I'm going to go live with Lamb Fine Art. Already follow Laura, you definitely need to give her a little, um, a little love that way. So I just sent the request to Laura and there she is. Can you hear hey. me? <laughs> yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Everybody is waving. So say hello. You've got a whole bunch of art friends and we just had everybody saying where they were from. Um, we have someone awesome. from Illinois, but originally from Bristol. So, um, and Harvest Table Restaurant is here. Um, nice. Laura, can you tell the story and can you point the camera up a little bit so we can see your face a little better? And then can, yes. we, can you tell us the story? of what Harvest Table has for you tonight. Totally, yeah, so um, I went, uh, the chef, Charles Parker, reached out to me uh, about a week ago, and I told him some of my favorite things at the Harvest Table, which is usually pizza, 
Um, <laughs> and I'm a big veggie lover. So I went by and just picked this up tonight. Um, and I waited for it. They wanted it to be like perfectly hot and fresh. And they're oh so my nice. Gosh. I got to watch it cooking in the brick oven. Um, so <laughs> good. Um, here it is. Can you see? Yes, here, I can see. Oh, look cool. at that. Yeah, it's really beautiful. They made like a velvety sauce with uh, Jerusalem artichokes that are grown at the Harvest Table Farm. And then these are, I think, lion's mane mushrooms oh that are goodness. grown by Pick and Grin Farms. Okay. So this, um, is, this is all within the Southwest Virginia area, which you live in, yeah. in Abingdon proper, correct? Right up on yeah. the border. So. Yeah, I live in Abingdon. This is at the, happening at the William King, which is in Abingdon. And this pizza was made like about, <laughs> it, didn't, it took not as long as I thought it would. It was like eight minutes up the road. Um, so super quick to get to Harvest Table. And they're so nice. They have a lot of local art in there. I've had art in there twice before. I'm well, trying to get this like, set. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. No. Put your pizza oh. down and then just join us for some conversation okay. and tell us about each piece. And you can, because um, I know that these, I know that these pieces are um, a little bit chronological, so you'll have to remind me of the, of the personal chronology <laughs> there. But anyway, no I, I do want to give a huge shout out to Harvest Table for doing that. This is, this is like, this is super magic for me. And I just have to gush for a moment because most of the restaurants I've been doing have been very close to the gallery. And so I've been the one eating the food, but <laughs> like, I feel like this is the magic of the internet that like we get to coordinate things and make then everything happen simultaneously. So, um, they're in Meadowview, Virginia, correct? And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and everything is as local as possible and the menu changes all the time. So, um, they don't have a set menu. You can't necessarily go there and be like, I'll have the this, you know, but um, I'm sure all of it is absolutely delicious, no matter what the season you're in. Um, so if you happen to be up in the evening area, you need to go and, you know, make your reservation or just drop by even to, to see what they're up to there. So drinking some power juice, huh? Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's really diluted carrot juice. It turns out if I make my water like a bright color, I'm much more likely to drink it. <laughs> well, and you know what? It actually matches some of your paintings too. So yes. why don't you yes. tell us a little bit about this series? That's a good segue, right? <laughs> sure, sure. You can, if you want to like go and order, I don't know how much you'll be able to because they might be all over the place, but I'll That's tell okay. you which one. Okay. Well, first, so, of all, first of all, tell me a little about yourself, your okay. creative journey, like your background in art, and then like <laughs> lead us into this, like what this series means. Okay, cool. I have, I have notes here in case I forget, but I'm going to put them to the side and just see what happens. Okay. So, um, I like, I've always been like a super creative child. Um, and my parents really encouraged my artistic endeavors. So, and I was an only child. So I was alone, like a lot, um, like most of the time. And so I remember like during the summer, I would go with my dad to his office and I would sit in the corner with um, like an art set, uh, all these watercolors and all these paints. And I would paint anything that I could. I took like nail polish and I would paint chopsticks. Um, I had like a chopstick collection. So just like I saved everything and I wanted to paint everything and make new stuff out of everything. So I even remember I had like a coat hanger. I made a mobile out of coat hangers one time um, just for fun. So that's the beginning. And also, I've actually brought something from, like, the super early days. I'm going to grab it. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to spin around the gallery. And if anybody has any questions that they want to ask Laura, you drop it in the comments. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Did everything. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I just wanted to just point out, like, I was so lucky that I actually had the support as a child um, that my parents really encouraged me. Like, I had a great art teacher in elementary school, and we did, like, a Picasso-inspired self-portrait. Oh, my goodness. And I love that so much. I have to, like, <laughs> that. No, hold that up again. That's amazing. Okay, guys. I think this is. Then and now. I think this is. I know. Okay, that's crazy, because the one you're on is called Homage to Sylvette. And Sylvette, if you all Google this, she was one of Picasso's muses. And she's a gorgeous woman. And he did several paintings of her. But there's one in particular that... That kind of reminded me of. It's not like exactly the same. But so that's called Amish to Sylvette. And this was like an early self-portrait, just like a great prompt from a great elementary school art teacher. But what is important about this to me is it's crazy, it's weird. And my parents loved it. And my dad was like, oh, we need to frame that. And this is like third grade. 
So just the fact that like he took the time to make it nice and let me pick out a matching frame. Oh my um, and it's, see, it has like my name and the date on there and like a hanger. And so I just, that's a really, been a really big part of my journey is always having that support. And I'm, and I think that if I didn't think that my like third grade painting was amazing, I might not have kept painting and experimenting and making really weird uh, self-portraits down the line and many other things I've painted, but this is just a so you've been so you've been painting since since childhood, basically. Yeah, yeah I mean, I I really don't remember. I actually have a very vivid memory of like my mom taking um, like pudding, I think different colored puddings, and like I got to finger paint with them and like eat them too, like super early stuff. So I don't ever remember like not painting. Um, and now I try really hard not to eat the paint. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it does take uh, attention and mindfulness. So, so explain yeah. a little bit about how you like how you came to this series, and um, and maybe we can start with the very first painting, which I think is over here. Actually, you were just at it. I yeah, was that's just the at second it. One. This is the yeah, second this, one. Yes. Okay, let me flip around to the other one. Yep. Okay. So, and this is a, to the left is the first one, and it's a G. Clay print because the original sold to um, a woman who owned a gallery a while back. But so this is an amazing print by my printer, Asheville Fine Art Printing, Josh Niven. Um, but you can still tell it's like multi layer. There's a lot going on here. It's layer on layer on layer. And so it's not like when I painted this, yeah, look at that. Like you can see all the scratch marks where I scraped away. Mm -hmm. um, when I, I mean, when I went to paint this, I may have even had, I think that's supposed to be my hair on this side, but yeah, the, like the forehead, it's just, I would have old dried out paint on my palette. I like, at the time I painted this, I was not taking care of myself. I was definitely not taking care of my art tools, my art materials. And so I'd leave my brushes like half dry with paint on them. I would leave paint all over my palette. I had a big glass palette. I wouldn't bother to scrape it off. It was just, it was too much for me at the time to take care of much at all. Um, so... But I would take this paint that had half dried and I was like, this is kind of cool. And I would like decide, it was almost like a mosaic. I would decide where I wanted to chunk it on there. I'd be like, oh, this yellow might make sense there. And I know that the, the darkest dark needs to be dark, but I have this old purple. Let me use that. And so it was a combination of like actually mixing colors that I wanted and thought would look good together. And then I just find this old paint because I wasn't taking care of it. And I would just slap it on. And then some of the layers underneath would be more dried. And I would just scrape it away. So, um, so the, that's the first chef, one. chef underscore Chaz underscore asks, who is or was your biggest artistic influence? Gosh, um, I mean, I really, really, in the past, I looked a lot at, um, well, I think Picasso was a big one. I, I have like a, a book of his and I, it's fun to like look through and see um, some of his earlier works that were more figurative, like not... Like there's that homage to Sylvette in the background at all, which means like all the other, all the other ladies he painted. And um, yeah, those really messy pieces or not even messy, but the really, uh, the pieces that show like multi dimensions of somebody um, that, and maybe they almost look like he don't know what he doesn't know what he's doing. If you look back at his earlier works, um, there's some really beautiful and really clearly like 3D works um, that are really different from what we know him for. And he was like super prolific. So he's got all kinds of different styles. And I will be honest with you, Charles, I'm not super great at like, um, like my friend Eric Drummond Smith upstairs who can list off like all of these painters who's influenced him. Art history was like the class I did worse than in college. Um, I made like a C minus. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was way too busy like experimenting with my own um, style. But let's see, who else have I gone back and been like, yeah, that's a thing. Um, some of the German expressionists are, it's more like I'll paint something and then somebody will tell me, oh, you should go check this out. And then I'll go and look at it and, I, and then I build my work from there. So my work tends to, some of these literally layered works um, tend to be similar to some of the German expressionists. There's some like, <laughs> they're not always like really pretty. Um, but they're really, they're vibrant with color um, and there's a lot of emotion going on. Okay, so this, there's a related question here coming in that says, what influenced your very unique style? Like, so obviously Picasso was an influence, but what pieces of his style or other things that you were seeing? Obviously, 
not every artist focuses on their own self portraits. So this particular series is focused on that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I know that you also paint people quite a bit and live performances. So mm -hmm. you've made these choices and what led you to those choices and also the expressionist brushstroke <laughs> and the bright colors yes. and yeah. Well, thanks for breaking that question down. Cause I'm like, Oh God, I'm on the hot seat <laughs> and I like, can't like yeah, think, you know. tell you that many artists right now. Um, well, it's always been like a way to understand the world around me and understand myself. And it's always been, mostly been really bright colors and people. So when I, when I was alone as a kid, I, I like have drawings and drawings of these characters I would draw, I think almost like to draw like some friends into being. So I'm really fascinated with other people. And a lot of times I feel like an outsider, like I don't understand other people. Um, so I'm fascinated by the human experience. My major is in psychology. And when we first started doing live models in my painting classes in college, um, I loved actually getting in touch with the physiology of the body and, and how do I show that this is behind this and this is in front of this. Um, and it's a real person. Like, they're full of energy. It's not just a photograph. So this series started out, I was, didn't intend to paint a, a series of self-portraits. Artists just we want something to paint. We always want to paint or draw or make something. I happen to like to paint and I like to paint from life and myself is always available. So when other people weren't, I've just been drawing myself forever. So I would a even very, stay there's a very practical aspect to that. I mean, I know, I actually know several photographers who they're like, well, it's just me and I need to, you know, I might as well <laughs> paint myself because yeah. I'm standing there. So, and Laura, yeah. Laura, another Laura is offering encouragement to you, Laura, and saying she's not super great at regurgitating on the spot either. So it's totally <laughs> okay. This is why artists write, you know, this is the intimidating part of being an artist sometimes. So sure. When I want to name, um, I'm, I am nervous. I haven't given, I have never go live on social media. And I certainly don't like, like, so th there's a lot of hype for this. And I'm so grateful to y'all who are watching. Um, I'm totally nervous. So just to name that. <laughs> yeah. um so the talk about this portrait actually behind like the difference between you know obviously these these self-portraits are revealing in not only your technical approach but your technical approach kind of seems to have evolved alongside what you call like a journey of the self that you talked about in your artist statement. Do, do you have any, like, where does this portrait sit in that process? Yeah. So that's like a couple later um, after this, I've moved back home and I'm not like, I'm like trying to take care of myself. <laughs> I'm trying really hard. I don't know what that looks like, but I've like, i am gotten my own place and I'm working like maybe a minimum wage job. Um, it's pretty rough. Um, and, and by the way, like I, I went to William and Mary, I graduated salutatorian, like, um, but I have just had a lot of struggles with taking care of myself. And so at this point I'm like trying really hard and I feel like the image is getting clearer in a way. Oh, and those, I wore my, um, my feather earrings tonight is a throwback to that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I just feel like I'm still like, like I'm, I'm struggling with identity, struggling with like, what is the point? Well, I'll just, and I think one night I was like, well, F it, you know, I'll just go paint tonight and who's available as a subject, you know, me. Um, but so, I would... so, so this is a, a midpoint and um, there's, there's a, somebody is saying, how has your art changed over time as you've changed and grown? So coming from this point, maybe we can illustrate the answer to that question. What yeah. is the next portrait from here? That way I right. can move the camera. Let's see. After this one, there's, um, I think it's homage to Sylvette, which is just kind of like experimenting a little bit more. So, um, that's, so it's the that's, dark. this is the next that, one. That we've already seen, yeah. And then after From that, that one. one is um, a, right above it. So good, good placement there, Jocelyn. Okay, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. That's really cool. I know. Okay. Well, by the way, I went, to, I went to Catholic school, and so you actually watch the progression of Jesus' journey. Like, there's all these um, portraits of, like, when he's, like, walking with the cross, about to get crucified, and it's kind of traumatic. But um, this is reminding me of that, like, the journey through, uh, yeah. I guess, redemption. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> stations Not to martyr myself. I'm just reminding you. Stations of the Laura, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, so this great. is, so we have homage to Sylvette. And then, oh, I'm forgetting the title of this one. 
Um, that, so that one is, is in love with laughter and lightness. So yes. that was after I was, I started doing a lot of yoga. Um, just a huge shout out to Julie Smith Rutherford, who used to let me trade art for yoga when I believed I couldn't afford yoga. Um, so I was doing a lot of yoga at this time. And I just gotten in a relationship with my current partner. Oh, thanks, Jenny. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just, I see this. She said I was doing awesome. I had just gotten in a relationship with my current partner and I was just like happy and joyful. Oh, and by the way, due to his request, there are no paintings of him up here. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I was just feeling, and it's different because it's like light. I let a lot of the white canvas show. I'm not, I was like, oh, I'm still trying to do some layers because I love watching the color play. But actually there's a lot more trust in this one of just like, I'm just going to do it really quick. And I liked what happened and it just became even more, I was okay with it being even more abstracted. Like I wasn't trying so, this, so hard. This reminds me of these two pieces in the corner here. And I'm going to do a little bit of an adjustment so yeah. that I can put these two together. If I back up a little bit here. I've, this is, okay, one of the pandemic investments I made for this was a selfie stick, you guys. It changed my life. Um, here's, <laughs> I was wondering yeah, how you so, doing this. So here is, okay, as an amazing artist, have you ever grappled with imposter syndrome? Yeah, that's <laughs> Who asked Chef that? Are Chaz you in my head? Again, asking this question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I think the secret is everybody all the time always, right? <laughs> I don't know because it's so easy for me to look at other people like there's certain artists who have like you know made it um before me where I live and I'm like I don't know what it's like to be them they say yes to uh, for sure like I think when I first started selling my artwork at the farmer's market um I was like who am I to even be doing this you know people are going to hate it and it was so externally focused on what other people think um and it's not that that doesn't happen now. It totally does. Like, especially like if I do like a price increase, I'm like, oh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm ready to, to move to level up a little bit. Like th all those fears totally come up. Like, who am I to do this? Is it worth it? Am I worthy? Um, and I'm not sure that ever goes away, you know, but I, but it's just like the more paintings I've sold and painting in front of people helped a lot because people are so encouraging. I've, done over like 100, maybe 150 live music painting. And that was super nerve wracking um, to set up all my paints at a show, paint the musicians while they played. Um, but everyone cheers you on because you're doing something that's kind of brave, like creating um, in front of people. Uh, is it, it's, I, I, like, it still scares me, you know? Can you talk a little bit about, okay, so we had the development, you were talking about the empty white canvas, and I noticed that in these two paintings, these are, there's more of that showing, um, and so I think, are these chronologically next? Um, let's see. Also, I want to name that Brian Surway, who has, you know, made it for sure, is um, agreeing with us that it doesn't go away. So thanks, Brian. Um, and also thank you, Chef Chaz. So let's see, what's next after In Love with Laughter and Lightness? I think it is, um, I think it's Sacred Body. Um, actually. Okay, so here we go. Spinning around this and he's way. All kind of, the and these all the kind right. of happened at the same time. Yeah. I want to name this as like super... Um, like it's like before I've, when I've shown these works, I don't think I named like publicly on Facebook that they were self portraits. So it's very, um, yeah. Like <laughs> my, you know, when you dream that you're like walking in the supermarket naked, like my belly feels like that now. Um, I'm so, so sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> you didn't do it to me. I put my works in your gallery for a reason. I just want to name how I'm feeling. Cause I don't want, like, I don't want to pretend that it's easy, but I also think it's important. So feel free to go back to them. I just want to no. name how so, Self-portraits are, um, I think, I think a lot of, at least I'm just going to interject here and say that I think that a lot of the, you put more of yourself into your work than sometimes you realize. And, mm. and that, um, that, that can be revealing to yourself as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But these, um, these, these are really meaningful and I'm going to flip the camera back around. And we've got, um, we've got just a few more minutes to talk about them before we hop onto Facebook. Okay. So, Oh my um, gosh. I know. I told you it was going to go fast. Um, so, so, we, so this is the next one. 
Well, so yeah, so these were all painted very close together. And I just, I was doing, like I said, a lot of yoga. I was also going, um, taking a lot of classes at Shakti in the Mountains at the time. And as a, um, like a feminism based uh, women's healing center, or there's a lot of like feminism woven through a lot of the work that Kim Bashore Mackey does there. And so um, I was just like feeling it. And I was like, my body is not for other people. It is for myself. Um, and I got some messages when I was younger, like, uh, we've done a lot of healing around this, but like one of my family members found like a drawing I did when I was in like middle school, maybe late middle school of like my body that was like changing, um, my, my, a drawing of my naked body. And she like took it. <laughs> and, um, so I was, I'm just like, this painting is a lot about like unlearning those messages of like, that it's not okay, that there's something wrong, um, with being in your body and loving your body and loving yourself. And I absolutely love the, these textures here. This is why I'm yeah. like super close up on this face. So. Well, I do. I have some amazing um, pictures from my DSLR of this one. It's gorgeous in natural light. I love the chunkiness of this. I'm like, oh, I think this is the one that's going to sell next um, because I yeah. love it so much. Um, <laughs> yeah. And these are my colors. Like I, so I've used actually this painting. Actually, if you look at any of my lamb fine art stuff, you wouldn't know it because you can't see that it's a woman. But there, um, it's pictures from this painting are, oh, uh, thank you, Grace's Fire. It's, yes, yeah, it's my favorite. yes, I was yeah. just about to say that, that this is her favorite. And by the way, all of these are available. If you, if you didn't catch all of these as I spun around the gallery, you can see them all at eatart.space, which, yes, that is a URL. And um, each one of these, as I just, like, walk around, this is a Gickley print, and this is, um, these are all, as I touch things with my hands, guys, look, I'm a real person. Um, <laughs> this is, these are all available for purchase this week, and this week only, and if you follow Laura on Instagram, um, you get to see more of her work as she continues to create pieces, not only, not only self-portraits, but a whole bunch of other stuff, so please go and you know, if even if you can't bring home a piece and you don't have space on your walls, because these are big. Let me see. Like I'm standing next to them, and yeah, these are these are big. These are statement pieces. So even if you don't have space, you can still go and follow Laura and sign up for her newsletter and support her artistic journey that way. Thank so. you. Maybe for a second you could zoom out, and I'll just say one thing while we look at these last two. These these um, last two? Okay. Yeah, right behind you. Yeah, I gotta get around. I love your selfie Ooh. stick. Ah! <laughs> it's super handy, I'll tell you. Yeah. So, so um, all, most of these larger ones, especially the later ones like this, are 24 by 36. Um, and these are both G Clay prints on canvas because they both sold, and I'm so grateful to the two of you humans um, who bought them. You know who you are. Um, but the one on the left is called I Am Supported, I Support Myself. And that was a, um, painted about a year or maybe six months after the rest of them. This was in 2018. And it was after a decision. And it's back to the layers, right? Because I really love those layers. Um, but it's about this decision of like, when I choose to support myself, whether that's with a job or whether that's learning to ask for what I'm worth with my art. Um, when I support myself in that way, I'm supported, like the support comes. And so it's been a really huge journey for me to learn to ask for what I need, um, to speak up, to share my art publicly, and to say it's, it's actually worth something. And it's worth, worth quite a bit. And these are parts of my soul. And I just hope that that's also encouraging to anyone else who's like, oh, my God, can I actually do what lights me up and brings me alive? And I think if you put in the work and your intention is to support yourself, um, the, the support will come. It might take a really long time. I've been doing this for 10 years on and off because um, it's hard. Yeah. But I think it'll come. Yeah. And the shape yeah. of it changes like with pandemics and things. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> the shape definitely changes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Well, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. My camera's a little low, so I'm going to make a swift adjustment here. And I wanted to give a final shout out not the final shout out, just a final Instagram shout out to Harvest Table for the delicious custom made pizza. But they also do so many other things. And I've been I've been sharing pictures of their food um, on Instagram for the past few days. And you can just go follow them and they they update their Instagram every so often with whatever is in season, you know, next. And um, Joshua Niven did all the printing. This is his shiny stuff. He makes stickers too. 
I don't know if you knew that. Mm -hmm. Stickers and other really mm -hmm. cool stuff. So if you want to go local with your printing, you can hit Josh up. But mm -hmm. um, thank you so much, Laura, for chatting live. Um, if you want to continue the conversation, and also my voice hasn't totally exhausted you yet, you can come over and join us on Facebook. She's going to be answering questions for that audience. And lastly, please, you know, come and look at her work at eatart.space. That's a URL slash purchase if you want to bring any of this home. Um, also, just follow her on Instagram at Lamb Fine Art, like L-A-M-B Fine Art. So thank you again. I'm going to save this video and pop over to the Facebooks, and I'll see everybody there. Oh, Nancy says thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for being here. Thank you, everybody. And um, happy spring. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good night thank you so much for doing this jocelyn oh thank you oh and for facebook don't forget to give some shout outs to some of your other you know favorite fans and stuff okay <laughs> all right i'll see you soon <laughs> bye. bye thank you